gotta make wide turns. Getting on the road, here we go. It's officially official. Can you guys hear me all right? So we're still here in Wareham, Massachusetts, where the multi hole source is, and we've been here with Bob Gleason and his wife Jane and Ira, who works with Bob at the multi hole source, getting the 880 ready for us to take on the road. And it's taken a bit longer than normal just because it's a brand new model boat, and we're just kind of working the kinks out, just figuring it out. A little stuff like uh, like the pre feeder for the mainsail, just kind of it, it's jamming a little bit, so we're just trying to figure out the correct position to put that. Additionally, the trailer that came with this 880 is an Australian trailer because it's coming from Australia we're having trouble with the lights so we're just trying to get all this little stuff worked out and we're just about there all we have left to do is like bleed the hydraulic brakes on the trailer because it's a it's a surge brake trailer or hydraulic brake trailer and so we have to do that we have to take the roller furling unit uh, off the mast and just kind of move it back a little bit on the boat so it doesn't hit the camper in the back here and just hook up and make sure everything's good to go and we have to put on different trailer lights after those few things are done we're basically ready to leave here more on that a little bit later here it is This is how a lot of the Corsairs, the mast goes up there. And then a lot of the times, most of the time, you don't have to take the roller furling off the mast. It just kind of sticks out beyond it. Maybe you have a little bit of a splint that's kind of like lashed onto the mast, like a piece of PVC pipe or two by four or something that kind of helps support the end of the furler just sticking off there. But the trailer hitch is right there and this extends beyond it and the ball on the camper is like just out from the back of the camper we need to get the furler back like right in line with the bowsprit and we can move the mast back a little bit to get it in line with the bowsprit but that furler has got to be basically right there as well so we got to take it off from the top of the mast so that we can slide the whole furling extrusion back a little bit with it So yeah, that's where the furling extrusion attaches right there. We'll just disconnect this shackle and pull this off. And then we'll slide it up a little bit, loosen the halyard here as well. All right, there we go, it's perfect. It doesn't extend any further than the top of the mast. It's just one extra step because you have to detach it from the mast when normally you wouldn't have to do that on other boats or even on this boat if you just have a regular pickup or normal size truck or whatever. But because we have that tall camper, we gotta move it back a bit. All right, we're using the original wiring on the trailer. I think I have the lights wired up correctly. I just kind of twisted them up just to test before I do the waterproof butt connectors. Let me know if I have them right. Are they all good? All right, it is back to the shop today. We're gonna finish up those trailer lights and then we're gonna basically be ready to go. Today is Wednesday. We're gonna leave Friday morning, I think. Uh, tomorrow, we just wanted that one more extra day because the canvas guys doing the job dodger wanted one more warmer day to kind of do the final fit for the the canvas and the, and the isinglass or whatever that's called for the dodger so they requested tomorrow to be a day today is freezing it got into the 20s last night the high 20s uh degrees fahrenheit and it is still in the 30s right now so it's definitely a chilly day rude awakening from where we've been for the past couple years not up here in in the winter so definitely a change but it's actually a nice change it uh we'll be out of here soon enough we'll suffer through a little bit of cold but that's about it keeps things in perspective and makes you really appreciate the warmth um over again when you experience the cold for a bit
I think our first stop is gonna be Newport. We have some friends in the area, so we really want to meet up with them and hopefully take them sailing. And Newport is obviously a huge uh, sailing location. I think that's gonna be our first stop and then straight on to Long Island, pretty much. Bob, who owns a multi oil source, Bob Gleason, he has been a long time multi oil sailor. Sailing Corsairs for like, 30 years or a little bit over and he's so cool and easy to talk to so you can ask him anything and we've been learning just an absolute ton about sailing in general and especially sailing these boats and just like all getting into the knit and greedy and getting his perspective on it and stuff like that so it's been really fun hanging out with uh, Bob and Jane and just chatting with them. And Jane is a huge seller herself and they both grew up in this area so they know it really, really well. So we've just been having a blast with them. Okay. Thing look crazy. So this is where Bob's shop is. This property is Cape Cod Shipbuilding Company. Oh, it's like an old property, old historic shipbuilding company, and Bob is over on this side of the property. Here's the multi-hole source. And you can see he's got like a ton of trimarans all in here, mostly customers' boats or boats that he's brokering for sale. Here's the 880 right along the building. freaking cold. I'm just gonna do a quick loop around the block to make sure everything with the trailer is working out all right and we don't have to adjust anything else before we really take off. So just a quick little test run. You can see we're pretty close here, but the truck's at an angle. Pretty straightforward. Doesn't feel like too much of an extra load. So the complete dry weight of this boat is like 3,400 pounds or so. Just pretty light for a big 29 foot boat, 28 foot boat. Probably a few hundred pounds over that just with the gear on it and the trailer and stuff like that. Feels pretty good though. The brakes actually seem really nice. Like it doesn't feel like it take, it's taking much extra braking power from my truck at all because this thing has uh, hydraulic surge brakes and it's got a brake on each wheel. So four brakes total because two axles, four wheels. Let's see as we go down this hill. I'll break right at the bottom of this hill. Yeah, I mean, braking is easy. Wow. Ooh, gotta make wide turns. Look at that sunset, beautiful. Feels good, let's go check it out.
It honestly feels pretty good. I'm I was expecting it to feel more like a load. We'll see what happens when we get on the highway. I'm sure it's gonna feel a little more, but you're just cruising on the highway. You're not accelerating, decelerating too much. Feels good. The, the biggest difference is just how long we are now and uh, how much wider of a turn I gotta be conscious that I gotta make. And then I'm sure backing up and stuff like that's gonna be a bit more challenging, but the load feels fine. Nice wide turn, coming back into the shop here. Yeah, feels good. It's gonna be a tricky one, this three point turn here. as we pull out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just scream if anything's going, <laughs> going wrong. Bye, thank you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye. How does it feel? Feels good. Getting on the road. Here we go. Okay. It's officially official, our first day by ourselves driving a trimaran, and our first stop is Newport. I don't know if it will be possible, but we may be able to see Neverland on a mooring if she's not already taken out of the water, which would be really cool to sail by her, don't you think? Yeah. First turn? First turn? <laughs> Successful. Check! <laughs> 